Okay, question of the week from Michael. <coughs> John? Okay. Oh, question of the week. Top sport question of the week, indeed. And of course, Michael will win a hundred dollars into his top sport account. Two hundred. You... Why is it two hundred? I think you wrote two hundred. Hang on, I'll check this. Michael, Michael's got more money than the Pope anyway. But uh, it's, I mean, it's pretty. Easy. It's, it's, question for today's review show: Need to be in ten minutes for your chance to win two hundred jackpot this week. Credit to your top sport account. I think BM, you might be up for the hundred here. I hope you are. You'll get $200, that's what we said. Okay, uh, Michael, uh, you, you've written here, PD mentioned a few weeks ago on the show, the ideal scenario of markets opening 20 minutes or so before jump. I agree for the way I do things that this would be ideal. Just want to tackle this from a practical point of view. What impact on turnover do you think it would have, up or down? Maybe tackle individually in your own betting and then maybe market as a whole. Um, look, uh, I'm... I'm stuck in the old days. I figure that markets were much more vibrant, more competitive, more interesting. Um, uh, the anticipation was 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 what sold racing as a as a as a pursuit in the sport, and the ability to bet um, early. I can remember really. I'm just trying to think back. You know, if you weren't dealing with Vatuatu boogies. Um, uh, or any of the other SPs, and you were dealing with, say, with say Darwin All Sports, you could get on, you could get on um, uh, to win a decent bet. You'd ring up and get a quote on race morning, and um, you you could back it early if you wanted to. But most of the action was late, and, and when I say late, you know, 20, 25 minutes before the previous race has been run, the prices go up, uh, everyone's waiting to stand there and 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 and, and assess. And it was very competitive, and the percentages of that were incredibly competitive. Um, I think that turnover would go up if that happened. I think if they got rid of early betting, so you know from the Wednesday onwards, um, it would be better, because the mistakes that they're making early, if they were forced to make those mistakes, because let's face it, the corporate, you know, marketplace is where the majority of the perceived marketplace is. Um, if they were to make those mistakes 20 minutes out and had to bet you to lose a lot more, like what the rails bookmakers are obligated to bet you, say, and I'm saying it should be scaled based on how big you are. So a tab or a sports bet should maybe be forced to lose 10 or 15 on a Metro Saturday. You know, um, John Walter, who, who fields on a couple of meetings a week, maybe it's to win five. You know, so there, there should be a scale there. Uh, to, to counter that. I think that turnover would go up. I think interest in the sport would be better. And uh, uh, many of my um, friends, and, and one in particular who makes his, a great deal of his profit margin from sniping these early prices, um, it'd be better for me. So yeah, self-interest, get it back that one. Um, uh, the market as a whole, I think, would improve. Uh, I think no doubt that it would improve. Um, it's not going to happen, but this is just, you know, a hypothetical. This is the thing with racing in so many respects. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And that's true. Like, it's it's, it's so sad that it's true that, it, that nearly every person who's been in racing forever, and, like, you've got your snipers and people who take advantage of little gaps who wouldn't want it for sure, but most people, uh, like, you look at the Betfair markets, they don't, there's no vibrancy there till 10 minutes before the race. Not even. And then there's huge swings. So... You, you put yeah, that yeah. out and, and, and multiply that across the, the whole bookmaking landscape 10 or 20 minutes out, I mean, probably 20 minutes, 30 to 20 is probably like realistic. Uh, what would happen? It would, it would be madness. It would be chaos. It would be unbelievable. The swings would be incredible. The turnover would be insane. Uh, you know, not everyone comes up with the same horses and most of these people aren't playing in the markets early anyway. It's just a couple of snipers and some recreational money. Yeah. I'd, love really, I'd love them to put a figure on it. There's an opportunity for racing officials to reinvigorate the tote. They mm. choose not to take it. Um, no. they, could, they could adopt um, many different uh, methods and trial them. One of them mm. proposed by Rob Waterhouse some time ago was that there's two tote pools. There's the off-course tote pool, which is, I don't know, take out of 15 or 20. Mm. There's the on-course, the on which is a take out of zero or, or, or a low percentage. 
that would stimulate and bring that would yep. that would bring that would bring back the big punters on course. I'd be there in a heartbeat again, mm -hmm. and have people working at other tracks as well. Um, the tote would reinvigorate. The big players would come back um, because they understand the incentive of a discount or a heavy discount to those markets. And and the race clubs, I don't think the tab would be worse off if they and, structured and the model correctly. So that's one option. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, that's one option. Another option would be to Richie Irvine's idea, I think, for memory, was um, take all of the, you know, force the... Sorry, let me just bump that call. Um, would be to... Just sign out of there. Um, would be to um, force the corporates to put their exotic bets back into the pools and... and Richie, that was Richie. me. I'm taking credit for that. You're saying, I do remember Richie saying something like that, but he's come up with great ideas. You know, he's, he's a thinker. And, mm. and, and, getting, and then the corp is getting some sort of action, you know, on that, some sort of rebate on that. So well, there's lots of things they could do to build the, the, build the on-course market and reinvigorate the tote and reinvigorate and change the structure of racing. It's all very well to say, oh, that ship sailed. Yes, it, yeah, it has, and it's not going to change much. And 99% chance it, this won't happen. But there's still an opportunity there if they really wanted to do it. The point is yeah. that we need it. We need administrators driving the industry, who see this and can visualise this. Because the moment we get people on board who recognise that the value in this industry going forward is the punter and not prize money, then mm -hmm. the industry has a chance to stop the bleed. We may never get back to what we were, but we have an opportunity to to repair some of the damage. And the person they need to look after is us, not the corporate bookmaker, who is the yep. one currently writing the rules and has everything in their favour. They're allowed to not bet me on quadrellas, but they can bet you because you lose 25% on quadrellas, so you can have them, but he can't have them. And the pools are stripped, like you're saying, which is, again, restricted to it's, it's, it's total bullshit. In, in, the corporate world, in the corporate world, there'd be people going to jail over stuff like this. Um, yeah. it, is, it, it is criminal, in, in my mind. It's certainly unethical some of the behaviours and practices that they adopt um, and it can change. One of Michael's or part of Michael's question is, is this something that could be written into the race fields legislation, i.e. you know when markets, when you're actually able to offer a market mm. and when you can bet and how much you've got to bet? Absolutely. Why couldn't it be um, written into it? Do you think any of the current racing bodies would even consider this proposal or trial it on out of Carnival Metro Saturday meetings? No, I don't think they will. Not with the current uh, regime and right. there is a need to change but what's what's got to change too is the content the amount of content that we're betting on i mean yeah. most of the shit most of the shit that's served up every day is non-tab meetings dressed up as tab meetings mate i, I spoke to an old fellow who was he's an absolute genius in my mind who thinks completely out the box and he calls benchmark 58s and lower he calls them graveyards and that's what they are they're horses that are they're delaying the graveyard and that's like 80% of races or something in the country now. And, and, and you're spot on, like too I'm much. Not saying, I'm not saying we shouldn't have those races so that, you but, know, yeah. the, the, the battling connections and the trainers and the jockeys can make a living and grind out, you know, a, a basic living. What I'm saying is they shouldn't be tab meetings. There should be That's less right. content, less content, more anticipation and more drive towards promoting what we've got and what we're showcasing. And we've got to stop trying to have the party and start getting people at even, least educated. Even if you're not a fan of prize money, which I'm obviously not either, as in the be all end all of racing, because all to me that does is drive up the prices of yearlings, drive up the price of everything in racing and price most people out, um, which again doesn't make sense. Um, your number one goal has got to be turnover because it's the only way you make money. Uh, it can't be like selling drinks well, on track, obviously, but. Well, they do make money out of that. I'm not saying they don't, and I'm not saying they shouldn't have that. But that's got nothing to do with the betting product. That's got nothing so to do with the two yeah. revenue streams. Why are you not driving this one as high as you possibly can? And that's the only question I want to ask. And what, like, as anyone in the industry should be asking that. Well, the way in which it's done, or the way in which they perceive it should be done, is is at odds fundamentally to what everything I know and everything I believe. And mm. you know, if it was you or I running it, we'd be doing it differently. It doesn't mean we'd do it better. We might make no. mistakes. Maybe we try this and it fails. Maybe it doesn't go anywhere. But the but thing it's is, going to, this way to me, it seems to be. It's a, 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 a 
it's, a slow, it's a slow bleed. I mean, the, the prize money on races is fucking ridiculous. Black type mm. races have been hurt because of the benchmark and all the bonus schemes. Um, it, it hasn't been done well. Just because it, it, it's the norm and it's the new thing and, and, and that's what happens doesn't mean we should continue. All mm. these, this pissing contest between the different PRAs of, over prize money and status is not helpful. It might, it might help individual agendas, sure. And it might benefit certain participants, but the participant that matters is the punter. We couldn't give a fuck, and I'm swearing. They're diluting the product, like you said. We, we, we couldn't care less whether it was a hundred thousand dollar race, fifty thousand dollar. If you took if you took every benchmark race on Saturday and took it from one hundred and thirty or fifty or whatever it is down to fifty, you'd still get the same field. But you you put the prize money up. All of a sudden, the two and three year olds, it's not even the prize money they're worried about. It's their stallion fee because their sales prices are up because the prize money's up. So they're out of the races sooner. They're diluting, diluting their own product. The only people they just have the a model, winning. The model yep. benefits the breeder. Yes. And the mo- okay, no doubt. And mm. I don't think that's right. I mean, when I first got into racing, it was quite common for individuals to own horses outright, either in partnership with a, a mate. Or, or, mm. or a couple of mates, um, and, and Sydney gets were almost unheard of. There was very few of them. Now that doesn't happen anymore. People don't own horses outright anymore. It's it's not a well sometimes, but generally speaking, not. It's twenty owners, forty owners, fifty owners, whatever it might be, and and so the, the whole structure of of what's been designed. Well, you know, be careful what you wish for, I suppose. But they've got what they want, um, and I don't see it doing anyone any good long term and uh, it's no, only going to continue it's, it's only going to everyone's going to make money but to, it's very sure. one-sided at the moment it's very yeah, one-sided it's and it seems detrimental to racing in the long term there are things that can be done and i think should be done in order to preserve the what's left of, of what we have as a, as a betting industry you know the question is very good because when there's I, so when many I, when I, there's so many different things. And look, it's obviously emotional and other people will be totally, totally disagree with what we're saying. That's fine. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, I'm concerned because I rely on it to live. So if I can't make enough money betting, uh, then I need to do other things as well. So, um, and there are plenty of people in that boat. And if you're as passionate about it as you are and I am as I am and you're looking for other avenues, the people coming into the game are not even going to bother looking. Well, they don't. And that's my biggest there's, problem. There's no education. Yeah, and and that, that is a problem. You know, you run a service, right? You, you're you're producing content for people and selling that content. Um, but if you can't get customers to engage or new customers to engage, then long term, that's, well, that's just the bleed, isn't it? Even the little changes with it. So, like we used to send out a lot of early information, and you just can't now because it collapses. They won't if if. If they say that you're one of my clients and, and I'm one of my clients, for argument's sake, we both back the same horse at the same time, but they don't have to bet both of them because they identify them as connected. And and these are new rules that they put in to stop them being, you know, uh, having to bet the price that they've got up on the screen. And and things like this that they just keep saying yes to them are just like completely <laughs> diluting the product and stopping turnover. It's just it's just crazy. Okay, and it's things they add on and on and on, but they never take back. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll at least get a um, an increase in, in minimum bet laws in New South Wales um, uh, at the end of the season or, or in the new season. Hopefully, that's that's on the agenda. Um, and no, I just hope it's not the end. Like it can't be that hard to get some sort of situation. Like you only need one person in charge of racing Australia, someone who, who who believes in it a little bit that the the turnover is an issue where it's a, it, it can be driven through a few simple changes and, and, and then it can sort of start to roll. I, I refuse to believe because it's so illogical, everything they do, that it's impossible to reverse a lot of this stuff very simply. Well, the POC is just, uh, just a fucking joke. I mm. mean, it, it just does nothing but tax the industry and, and tax the punter. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just another money grab. And there's only so much that the punter can bear, right? You can't just keep taxing them and taxing them out of the game. Um, there are lots of things that can be done there's lots of good ideas out there. I might have some. You might have some. Richie Irvine I might have some. Yeah. There's other people that have them. Um, surely a think tank is warranted, and uh, but it's very hard to get traction. I think Richie tried to do this. 
Well, I think it only okay, takes yeah. one, and I really do think it. Like, there's a few people in charge at the moment, and I don't know what they're whether they're just oblivious or they have no interest in it. And I'm not forever saying that there's any sort of corruption or anything like that, because that's what everyone kind of thinks it's going down that line. I don't. I just think it's been completely overlooked, and it only takes one or two, and everyone's kind of put their hands up and gone. And I know Richie tried his ass off to get a lot, a lot more through than what he did, and he and, and he got, uh, you know, probably the, the minimum that they were allowed to, they were willing to give, which is is what we've ended up with. But it's it's not even about minimum bet laws. It's about sort of wanting the, the industry to thrive long term and, and getting everyone in a room who has common interest in the industry and making sure that money's flowing through the whole industry, not just to one or two parts. And it's uh, very lopsided, which is what it seems to be. And I don't, I don't believe that that can't be reversed. Like, it's just... I can't see it any time soon. It, it, it can't be. It can't be brought back to what it was. No, but it never. Can, but it can be improved, yes. no doubt. And it just takes people with the the gumption and the guts to do it. Fuck the mm. politics. Just mm. get the job done and get people in there that are capable of doing the job and not worrying about what what other people are thinking, and and focus on what's best. And and, and what's best is that the punters are happy. And if the punters are happy, they bet more. Yes. And if they bet more, they'll turn over more and they'll make more money anyway. So, you know, yeah. stop taxing punters. Uh, give them like, a way to get on that's fair yeah, for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, give the, them. The, the scalable, the scalable yeah. and fair, depending on how big you are. The corporates are probably very happy with the way things are and they don't want oh. much to change at all. Well, it's basically their um, poker machine. They can't lose. Yeah. yeah. But that's they can't lose it's all in their favour. And that's silly. It is silly, but um, yeah, give them give them correct information, a way to get on, as much education as you can, and away we go. That's what we try to do. We have ranted long enough today, not for an hour and twenty six uh, minutes, thunder, but we've it's been an epic Q and A, um, and obviously one that's dear to our hearts. And well done, Michael. John, I'll just send you a bill for the extra half the extra hundred. Mate. And, uh, we'll, we'll, Another two hundred for Michael. He just he makes money when he's not. He's probably asleep. What do you mean another two hundred? No, he hasn't. I don't think he's won it before. This no, he hasn't. He just but it's another two hundred for him on the pile, mate. He's just got a pile that he just keeps putting it on. He's a, he's a genius. Anyway, good luck. Indeed. To him. Indeed. Thanks, punters. We'll be back on Thursday for a uh, preview of some of the uh, group action on Saturday at Denham. I can't wait, mate. Imagine how James Jason will be like a caged lion, mate. He'll be that ready to go. It'll be incredible. I can't wait. He's keen. Thanks, all. See you. Thanks.